Welcome back to the absolute ultimate level 55 hybrid build for 2022 that deals so much damage that your polo marks will actually learn to fly. This build will deal up to 17 million damage on a polo mark that is more than any normal player would dream of when they complete the game on level 99. This build will give you level 99 power as early as level 50, using normal assassinations to overrun mercenaries, using overpower animations to kill a mercenary or using single arrow shots to kill a mercenary on level 55. And even if you struggle with the mythical animals like the Nemean lion or the cyclopses, that will be a very easy one-sided fight. Even if you try on Medusa, it won't take you more than one minute to beat her. This build will have 50,000 Vora damage, 650% critical damage at 100% crit chance and you don't have to do any money grind to get all these stats. But the best thing is that there will also be a complete free build variant that doesn't require you to get any items from the shop. But now let's first check out the damage values. Please be aware that these have been done under perfect circumstances where we perfectly hit the enemy from behind with an active Typhoon's Axe damage boost to show you what is the maximum possible damage for this build. With a perfect light attack you will deal up to 326,000 damage, a perfect heavy attack will be 450,000 damage and a perfect charged heavy attack will be up to 1.4 million. A Fury of the Bloodline will be 2.8 million damage and a perfect executed overpower attack will be between 4 million and 5.4 million damage. That is more than enough to kill every mercenary on Nightmare because at level 55 mercenaries on Nightmare only have around 1 million health. So even the devastating shot with 2 million will have plenty of room to kill them. And of course you will be able to assassinate every enemy in this game including every mercenary that is on your level or maybe even one level above you when you use rush assassination. And for the assassinations you don't even have to activate the Typhoon's Axe, that is working even without the additional damage, which makes this build so incredibly strong and very cool to use. This is an ultimate level 55 hybrid build that can one shot a mercenary with an arrow, with an assassination or with a single warrior attack. But you also need a bit of preparation for this build. You have to solve all the ostracas you already solved for the level 22 build, for the crit chance at full health and for the crit damage at full health. You can check out the level 22 build because there is a complete guide for all these ostracas in that video. And when you have done that you should go to Hephaestus workshop and purchase the next 3 tiers for the crit chance at full health and the normal crit chance for the 30,000, 60,000 and the 100,000 upgrade. That will cost you around 300,000 money and you will have that amount anyway when you simply sell every weapon you collected so far. So you don't have to collect any additional weapons if you simply sold everything anyway. If you have a little bit more then you could also buy the first upgrade for crit damage and the first upgrade for crit damage at full health that will cost you another 30,000 each. But now let's finally check out the builds. I will first show you the best version for the maximum damage and maximum crit chance and crit damage and after that I will show you a build version that only uses gear you can acquire for free in the base game. So in our first version we will have 50,000 warrior damage and 200,000 assassin damage. And thanks to the beacon bow of course we will also use the same 50,000 warrior damage when we shoot our arrows because the beacon bow amplifies our warrior damage for our left weapon by a factor of 1.6 and we will also use the same damage when we shoot arrows. That is because the beacon bow adds its DPS to our left melee weapon so just make sure that you always upgrade the bow as often as you also upgrade your left melee weapon. For our left melee weapon we use Hater's Harper which is a perfect epic warrior sword with warrior damage, critical damage and damage swords and we engrave the plus 100% damage but health cap to 25%. Of course if you don't like to play with the health cap with the reduced health then you can simply engrave armor penetration here if you already have it or you can just go with the permanent fire damage engraving that also comes in very handy together with the Typhoon's Axe engraving. Of course you can also use any other weapon you want. You can use a perfect axe, a perfect dagger, a perfect spear. Just make sure that all your weapons have warrior damage, critical damage and damage with your weapon type. So if you want to use a spear you should get a spear with warrior damage, critical damage and damage with spears for example. So you can make this build with any weapon type you want. But getting haters harper is actually really easy because there is a quest called a friend in need in Attica. And when you complete the quest and lie to hater to keep the sword then you get the perfect epic sword and you don't have to grind for it. 
this is a much better sword than any other legendary sword in the game. So you should always aim for weapons that have warrior damage, critical damage and damage with that weapon types to get the most damage out of your builds. For the second melee weapon we will use the Typhoon's Axe with warrior damage, crit chance while full health and the 200% critical damage with fire attacks. Here we will engrave 30% critical damage. This weapon is mainly used to get your crit chance to 100% because of the 12% crit chance while full health you get when you upgrade this weapon past level 51. If you also want to use your 200% critical damage with fire attacks you have to know that you have to activate that with your flaming attacks ability. It does not activate when you just use permanent fire damage on your weapon. You always have to activate flaming attacks and wait a full cycle until the 200% damage is actually applied to your stats. If you further level up you may switch to armor penetration here instead of the critical damage but at that level I found it more useful to use the critical damage instead of armor penetration because the damage was the same and you will also boost your assassin damage to overrun mercenaries. On the big horn bow we will engrave the upgraded 8% crit chance. The other stats of the big horn bow are useless but don't forget that this weapon is adding all its 2400 dps to your left melee weapon contributing to a major part of the 50,000 warrior damage. So get this item if you can use your 200 free helix credits to get this bow it is the most important item to get in the game. For armor pieces we use a Nemean lion set but with different engravings this time. On the headgear we will engrave the upgraded 16% crit chance while full health which we upgraded previously at Hephaestus to be at least the tier 8 engraving. That gives you 16% instead of the usual 10% which you only get when you solve the ostracast. Then on the bracers it is now actually really worth it to engrave 8% crit chance. At level 22 we were only able to use 2% crit chance so we didn't use it and engraved something different but here the 8% is actually a no brainer and you should definitely engrave it. We will do the same here on the belt and engrave another 8% crit chance. Of course you also have to upgrade this crit chance engraving to tier 8 at Hephaestus. That leaves us the torso for the only room where we could actually engrave the plus 100% damage but minus 100% resistances because on the boots we will engrave another 60% crit damage at full health or 50% depending if you upgrade it or not. All this will give us a total of 458% warrior damage, 340% assassin damage. We have a total of 42% damage with swords because we only use one sword. We could of course get more if we use two. But having the crit chance here to be exactly at 100% with no negative effect is actually really worth it. We have 650% critical damage. Of course this critical damage is only 650% if the Typhoon's Mace is active. If you didn't activate it you will still have a whopping 450% and that is still enough to overrun every mercenary which is on your level on Nightmare difficulty. We will also have 40% fire damage that will amplify your weapon damage when you use the Typhoon's Axe and when you shoot fire arrows and of course the minus 100% resistances which you have to deal with in exchange for getting all the crazy damage. If you want to play with the free build variant then you will also have to collect the whole Spartan war hero set which includes killing the monger in Corinthia in chapter 3, killing the Lanos of Paros in chapter 6, defeating Lagos in chapter 7, killing Kalidas at the Pancration in chapter 7 and also defeating Skylark the leader of Eubea. We will even have 56,000 warrior damage and also 203,000 assassin damage here in that build. Of course a major part of that is again coming from the Bighorn Bow and the Bighorn Bow is the only item which is from the shop but you can use your 200 free helix credits to get this item for free as well. If you don't have the Bighorn Bow however or if you spend your credits on a different item then you can simply use the Hades Bow instead and grave crit chance on it similar to as it is shown here. We will use two epic swords in this variant. The first sword will be Hater's Harper with the same 100% damage engraving and then the second sword will be the Sword of Axon with warrior damage, damage with swords and fire damage. And here we will engrave an additional 30% critical damage as well. So the increased 56,000 warrior damage are mainly because we use another damage with swords engraving here but we will have little less critical damage in this build. You can get Hater's Harper as already shown from the A Friend and Need quest in Attica when you lie to Hater and you can find the Sword of Axon in the Parthenon chest in Athens. The Bighorn Bow will have the same 8% crit chance similar to the other build. Again if you don't have it use the Hades Bow instead. Here on the Spartan War Hero Helmet we engrave 16% crit damage while full health. 
on the Spartan War Hero Bracers. We will engrave 60% crit damage while full health because we already have crit chance and that crit chance is only 6%. So we cannot increase it and we cannot engrave it again. So we go for the crit damage here. Here on the belt we can engrave it so we use the 8% crit chance to engrave it on the belt and on the torso we use 100% damage but minus 100% resistances. Then on the boots again we will use another 16% crit chance at full health. That will give us a total stats of 463% warrior damage, we will have 60% damage as swords and 80% crit chance at full health. However, if you engrave another 10% crit chance but minus 50% crit damage on one of your melee weapons, you can get this to 90%, which is really awesome by just using the Spartan War Hero set. But when you level up, you can of course also increase your crit chance engravings and also put more mastery points into crit chance to reach 100% anyway, even when you only use the Spartan War Hero set. The abilities and masteries will be the same for both builds and you should have collected all the 22 tombs from the base game already at that level, which means we have 76 points to our disposal. You also have to upgrade to spare level 5 in order to upgrade all your abilities to level 3 abilities. That is really important because otherwise you will have very weak abilities that will drastically reduce your damage. You should definitely get level 3 for 6 cents because that slows down time for 8 seconds whenever you are spotted and that gives you much more time to react and assassinate your enemies, unlock fire or poison arrows because they will increase your damage, then get the devastating shot and if you don't want to get the devastating shot of course you can also opt for predator shot or multi shot instead. But if you have only limited amounts of points, I would recommend you to get the devastating shot first because it's the easiest one to use. Definitely fill out Archery Master, that one is mandatory because it also refills your first adrenaline segment whenever you are out of combat. In the Warrior Tree you should get second win for the health refill and also of course Weapons Master that gives you 10% additional crit chance and 40% additional warrior damage. So it is an absolute mandatory ability to get this. Also go for flaming attacks if you want to activate the Typhoon's Axe ability. I mainly use this only for boss fights for the Cyclops or for Medusa. Other than that I simply go for the fire damage for using my arrows or just increasing my standard attacks like overpower damage or fuel of the bloodline. Of course if you don't have fuel of the bloodline you can use these 3 points for other abilities like multi shot or predator shot. Here in the assassin tree you should definitely go for shadow assassin because that also gives you 50% additional critical damage. Of course you should go for rush assassination because it is the best assassin ability in the game. And then also go for stealth master. Stealth master is a really mandatory ability because it not only gives you 10% additional damage when you are out of combat overnight. It also makes your movements a lot quieter so that you are almost never alerted if you just sneak around some enemies. All your remaining points should be put into the masteries, you should go for 5 points on crit chance that will give you 2.1% crit chance. These will be the only points we invest into hunter or warrior, the real stuff is actually here below in the assassin tree. You should invest 12 points on damage swords because that is your biggest damage driver even more important than critical damage. Then go for 15 points on crit chance at full health and 8 points on critical damage while full health. After that you can further improve your build by going for damage while full health. You can also go for the regular crit damage and headshot damage but those will give you fewer percentage points per point you invest on them. So definitely go for the full health stuff first. Then in the warrior tree you can also go for warrior damage, fire damage and armor penetration. But that is also very good explained in the level 99 legendary build that explains you how to further upgrade this build because it is based on the same items. I really hope you enjoy this build, also especially the free variant with the War Hero set. And of course special thanks to my superfans Bruce and Grateful Golem. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.